five different tools to fun stop and drag. And guess what? This isn't one of them. You've seen people just pour coke in it, let it sit there for a little while, that'll unstop it. Well, guess what? That doesn't work. So what we're gonna talk about today is five different tools. Some you may actually have around the house, some you may not. But either way, I'm gonna show you five different ways to unclog a drain. And this is something you can do at your house very easy. Make sure you hang around till the end so you see my favorite tool to unclog drains, toilets, and tubs. It can actually work on all three. So you've seen these hair clog remover tools. Now, I'm gonna pop this little something and these little things are kind of sharp. And what you do, now that we've disconnected the pop-up assembly where I can just reach down and grab it, we're gonna set that right there. Now you stick this down and these little teeth are supposed to grab any hair. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide one in just to see. Don't know that we've ever done that in this sink. And we didn't get anything. Now, what if you don't have one of these at home? Well, you've probably got some zip ties. Now, maybe not as long as the ones I've got, but I'm gonna show you how you can take a zip tie and create your own one of those. Ready? So if you don't have one of those around the house, what I love to do is take a zip tie. Now, this is a long one, but this is, like I said, heavier duty than the little hair drain remover they got. And then take a pair of toenail clippers. And what you wanna do, you wanna line it up. You wanna cut about an inch apart and you wanna cut it to where it's pointing back towards the top because you're gonna push it in this way and then you're gonna pull it out. You want it to grab all the hair you can. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna line it up right here towards the end, cut in, and you heard it click right there. Then you kinda of twist it a little bit to make that hook stick out. Come up about an inch, do it again. So I've gone through now and cut four little barbs in it and when you rub your finger up, you can feel it. Then I'm gonna do the other side and I'm gonna do it right in between them. That way I don't accidentally go through and cut it in half. So now I've got one I made. You've still got the hooks on it. It's gonna grab the hair, it's gonna pull it out and it's probably gonna last longer than the other one. Now, one of the easiest things to do is very simple. Oh, I love the way that works. Anyway, one very simple thing to do is take the P-trap apart. Now, you may have already poured chemicals down there. There's gonna be water in there. There may be just nasty gunk in there that you really don't want all over your hands. So go ahead, get some latex gloves if you've got them, and then we're gonna slide a bowl up under the P-trap and loosen it up and drop it just to see if there's anything clogging it up down there. Now, this is also something that's really good to know Say you've dropped your grandmother's ring down in there. Say you've dropped an earring down, something you don't want to lose. Don't turn the water on anymore because that could push it back up. But knowing how to take apart the P-trap to get anything out of it could be something that could benefit you in more ways than one. So what we're gonna do is take a bowl and slide up under the P-trap. Now what this is far as is I loosen these nuts, right now the water level should be right about here. So I'm gonna loosen the top nut first to make it easy. Then as I loosen the bottom one, I know water's gonna come out, but I'm gonna catch it all right here in this bowl. Now, you may need a pair of channel locks. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a pair of channel locks to get on there, because if it's too tight and you can't turn it by hand, And this is where in our other videos we talk about having the right size tool. A larger pair of channel locks would actually probably be good for this, but I was able to make these work. Now, as you see, the water starts coming out because what it's doing is taking the water level from here down to the bottom here where I'm taking another part where it has an opening that's lower. So now we look right here, and if there were anything in here, it would get caught right there. Now, as you can see, the inside of this P-trap is clean. We know we don't have any problems on this. I'm just using this as an example. To be honest, I don't think I've ever gone into a house and seen one quite this clean. 
Now, when you put it back together, you wanna remember these washers are beveled and this points down because what it does is it squeezes it into here the more you tighten it up. It squeezes it tighter around the pipe and into the J-Bend itself. So you're gonna put your nut on first, then your washer. Bring it up and get your nut started. Your other end, it's got the washer built into it or the bubble piece. That way when it tightens up, it snugs it up and it does not leak. You want to make sure you get this at least hand tight. I like to take them down about hand tight. Then just give them about an eighth of a turn, just enough to make sure it's good and snug. Make sure it's not moving, it's not loose. Then fill up your sink, pull your trip lever up, fill it up with water. That way when you pull this up, it fills the whole thing and you know there's no leak at all. Now way number three and another really, really easy one is a plunger. Now we've got different plungers around here. Now I've seen these used because I've seen people fold them in like that and create the bulb there to seal off and use it that way. Now this is really a toilet plunger. So we're gonna set it aside. But these two here, this one is a universal also. It can be a toilet plunger or a lab. You can fold it in and use it that way. I prefer these little shallow cup plungers like this. You literally get it in, make sure that you push it where it's all the way around it. Now, if your sink has an overflow, you're gonna to need to plug that up some way. That way the pressure, when you push down, it's not just blowing it out the overflow. You literally, once you're in here, you wanna to try to get water in here because water is what you wanna push through. Push down real hard and pull up easy, let it get more water, let it suck more water in. Then push it down, push it down, push it down. Work on it that way, that way what you're trying to do, you're trying to push whatever's in that clog all the way through. Now, if you've got good suction there, you can just bounce it back and forth and what that'll do is it'll make that clog move. That way when you do push down hard again, it might break it loose enough that it'll push it all the way down the drain. Now, I love these little top sink snakes and the way that they work, literally, and this is one of the cheaper ones you can get, you loosen the nut here, slide out how much cable you want, tighten it back down, and then you turn it and as you see it spins. But what you wanna do is feed that down the drain, get it down to where you're at the clog and rotate it. So what you would do is loosen it up, push it down until you hit a stoppage. Once you get to a point where you feel resistance, come back out like I did there about six inches, snug it up, and then turn it and you want to push as you go down. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing that snake further down the drain. Now, once I get in there, I can start going back and forth, but I want to keep turning. Now, maybe you've got a serious clog, maybe you've got a more serious clog than just turning by hand will work with, or it's further down and you're going to be running in a lot of snake. Well, there's a trick for that. Now, I like to put the clutch on this, that way if it clogs, it doesn't just twist up the cable. But once you're in there and you've got it going, you can literally turn that drill on. So this is something that works really, really well. It's good at clearing the drain. This is probably, when I was a plumber out on the truck, this is one of the tools that I use more than anything. Because this not only works well on a lavatory, but it's great on a tub drain, pulling the overflow and going in through it. That time we got a little something. Are you gonna get that? Now this is one of my all time favorites. The Kinetic Water Ramp. This is my favorite just because it's fun. This is not just good for lavatories, it's also good for toilets. It's got adapters in here to where it'll do both. Now this is something that may be worth having around the house, but it's something I definitely love pulling out of my truck. So you wanna put this adapter on the end of the hose and what that's gonna do is gonna make it squeeze around it. Then, screw the hose onto the canister. Now, as you can tell, we've got all kinds of stuff over this because we've had fun with it. But you want to tighten it up and then you want to pump up with the pressure. Now starting with 20 PSI is going to be really good. You don't need a ton. We're going to go ahead and put it down in the drain like that. 
you may want to hold it there to keep it from pushing back up because once you pull this trigger all 20 pounds of air pressure in this canister is going to blow right down the drain listen to this now that blew so hard i heard it move water on the other side of the wall because there's another bathroom there you want to be careful when you're doing a toilet if you do a toilet on this side and there's a back-to-back -to -back toilet on the other side and somebody's sitting on it chances are You've just created a bidet for them. Skip it up and down. Guys, this is probably my favorite tool for unclogging drains, whether it be a lavatory or a toilet or a tub. But, guys, be careful with it. You can overpressurize it. You can blow pipes apart. You can blow fittings apart. Not anything that's glued, but like under a lavatory, the slip joint P-trap like we just did, if the clog is right in that P-trap, it could force so much air in and get so much resistance that it could blow the pipe apart. Not terribly dangerous, but you're gonna have to put it all back together. Anyway, that's why this is one of my favorite tools. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these. Now, if you're a plumber and there's something else you use or something you'd rather use, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you're a homeowner and you've used some of these products or you've got a trick up your sleeve that I hadn't talked about, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know. If you love this video, you're probably gonna wanna watch this one.